Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. Thin sheet metals are a popular starting material for jewelry or other artistic applications, so today let's look at carving some small pieces out of copper and brass stock. First up on the menu is copper. I'm going to focus strictly on contour cutting today since most people are looking at using a CNC in a similar manner to a scroll saw. Delicate features, small kerf. I'm using a number 122, 132nd inch end mill which will cut up to a 16th inch of material. This copper though is only about a 64th of an inch thick or about 0.4 millimeters. For work holding, because my end result will be a little on the fragile side, I want holding power that's evenly distributed and not excessively hard to remove. This is one place where I prefer using masking tape and super glue. It's not as tacky as proper double-sided tapes and I can use a lot of it. Another alternative you can use is fixed ring wax which won't be sticky or gummy at all if you cut into it with your end mill, and with the application of heat it'll release your finished part super easily. The cutting recipe I'm using here is what I call the 6-6 rule of thumb. 6 inches per minute, 6 thou depth of cut. With a tiny end mill like this, your chip load should be well under a thou, usually between 2 to 4 ten thousandths of an inch. Running at 10,000 RPM puts us right in the middle of that range at 3 tenths per tooth. One setting I have enabled in Fusion is roughing passes. This means my CNC is basically finishing as it goes, first cutting wide, then cutting right up against the edge of my part. That creates a wider channel for chip clearing, or in this case, dust clearing. I touched on the benefits of this in my deep contouring video, link to that below. If you're not using Fusion, the lack of this feature shouldn't be a deal breaker, just take a small brush or a compressed air gun and periodically clean out your cuts as you go if chips aren't getting out of the way of your CNC fast enough. Now while I let this run, I need to touch on temper. The softer a material is, the more poorly it will machine. Copper comes in a variety of tempers or hardnesses, and particularly in the jewelry world, softer material states are popular. You might hear terms like dead soft, half hard, and full hard. For CNC purposes, you will really want to stick to full hard material. Anything softer or annealed will grab at the cutter and leave a noticeable burr on the top edge. The end mill ends up pushing through the material instead of shearing it cleanly, which takes more energy, so not only is it louder, it's also more likely to break your cutter. Now, one variation in contour cutting which I don't recommend for first timers is going full depth on really thin sheet metal. If I back down on my chip load to about 2 tenths per tooth, I can actually slot through the entire thickness of my copper in one pass, and that does save a lot of time. But if I were cutting anything thicker, or if I didn't know with absolute certainty what grade of material I was cutting, I wouldn't recommend this. Also, I want to point out that Carbide 3D's 132nd inch cutter is relatively short and stubby with only a 16th inch of flutes. I've gotten cheap ones on eBay with 332 or even an eighth inch of flutes, and those will be much more fragile. Now, not all metals are created equal. Some are inherently softer, some are harder. Brass is a stronger material, so I would either keep these parameters or back off just a little bit. If you're feeling cautious, aim for maybe a 5-5 cut. 5 inches per minute, 5 thou depth of cut. In aluminum or copper, if I'm feeling impatient, I'd probably push to a 7-7. And with larger tooling like a 16th inch end mill, 8 inches per minute, 8 thou per tooth should work just fine. So to wrap things up, if you're thinking about cutting some thin stock, three things to keep in mind are, Number one, don't buy annealed material. It will break your heart shortly after it breaks your end mill. Number two, evenly distributed work holding really helps. And number three, start conservatively with your feeds and speeds, but also feel free to play around with this recipe as you gain more confidence in your machine and tools. I hope these tips will help you bring some of your design ideas to life. Good luck and have fun machining, folks.